G'day guys, Glenn Maxwell here in the Cooker Bat Cave. I'm here with Ricky Ponting and we're chatting all thing Kahuna Icon. Uh, Rick, you've got some amazing memories obviously with the Kahuna Icon. Yeah. You've just seen the, the this year's edition. Any thoughts? Well, the unveiling of the, the one of 32, the Glenn Maxwell <laughs> number on the, on the face of the bat. No, look, the new one looks awesome. Um, like the ones that I've brought along are all a bit um, worn and torn and tattered and no grips and stickers hanging off, but the new one looks uh, absolutely outstanding. So yeah, you're right. Look, I used Kahuna my majority of my career. I think I started right back in the day at the Cricket Academy with a thing called the Super Legend, which you wouldn't have even heard of before. It was Dino's. Yeah, Dino had the gold crown as well. Yeah, though. the Super Legend onto the gold crown, yeah, the onto a, a, couple of, a couple of iterations of Ridgebacks. Yeah. And then actually Australia Ray, there was, there was another one that you wouldn't have even heard of. They had a thing called the Big Bird. Big bird. Which was a, a heavier version of the gold crown, but it was a, like, like the up weighted one. I used that in the Aussie A versus Australia series that year, and then I reckon it was Ridgeback and then Kahuna right the way through with uh, probably six or seven, eight probably variants of the sticker configurations on those. You might have had a little dab with the bubble at one stage as well, didn't you? I missed the bubble. You test did debut, the bubble. test debut with the bubble. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So the that was yeah, that was in there. The, the bath. Yeah, let's not go back there. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded the DRS to be in play back then. I might, I might have still been batting. <laughs> not bad, is he? <laughs> now, I see you've got some numbers written on that special kahuna there. Just mm. tell, tell us a little bit about something you used to do, obviously, while you were playing. Yeah, so I kept every every bat that I made international hundreds with. Actually, it's probably every bat that I might have made even first class hundreds with, to be honest. But. Um, to be able to recognise it, I don't remember which ones are which. I just when I when I'd finished at the end of the game, just like the right right down the the score was against two and where. So there's a few on that one. Well, there's five hundreds on there. So South Africa, MCG, SCG. Actually, that's two. That's my hundredth test. 120 in the first innings, 143 in the second, 164 at Joburg, South Africa and England, Gabba, 06, 196. I, I used to write it down and. Yeah, just so you, I, could, I could keep them. You didn't need to write them there. You remember even the bowling attacks you were used to face on those. I could probably tell you the bowling attacks in, <laughs> in, the, in those. But, but, when it, but when it comes to, I mean, I, you're right. I probably didn't need to write it down because even today, going back through my bags and looking for these old bats, there were three bats that I had that were absolutely identical. I showed you them out the front yeah, before. Yeah. They're absolutely identical. And I knew one of them was a World Cup final bat in 03. And that, was, and that was the one I couldn't find. I got two of them out at the start. And I, thought, I looked at both and I thought, no, nah, they're, not, not, they're not the ones. And then I finally found the third one, which as, as I showed you, are identical. So I probably didn't need to, but it was just a nice little thing, even for moments like this, right? Like I, it, if I didn't have that written down, I could come in and told you anything and you might've thought it was a, you know, a joke, but that, that's exactly how it was with those. Yeah. yeah, so this year, obviously with the, the brand new Kahuna Icon coming out, is there gonna be any special feelings for you watching that go out and just- Watching, you, watching you play with it will for the be, Melbourne Stars, will yeah. There be, will there be flashbacks for you though, watching it? There's flashbacks all the time, to be honest. I mean, I, I've actually liked the fact that the, the that particular brand has lasted through the, you know, because it was it was one that was probably nearly only I used when I was playing. There weren't many other Australians that were using it at the time. And then Woodsman, Payne, uh, did you dabble with it for a while? Did you no, ever, no, you didn't, no, I didn't like the way I played. No. <laughs> <laughs> I kept on getting like the Beast, the Rogue, like just yeah. random. Well, things. even Puck and Kez and those guys now, they've all sort of had uh, the, the Kahuna at different times. So I liked the longevity of, of it right through the range. But yeah, I mean, um, Watching you walk out, as long as you're not are you using it against the Hurricanes at all. It might be one game that I'll say you're not allowed to use it. Okay. Yeah. So you can't oh, use it against the Hurricanes. Do I have to go back to the Beast or something like that? <laughs> yeah. to go back to something? No, a bit look, more I, I think it's great because I reckon if you look through most other um, cricket brands, they wouldn't have the same sort of name. Like if you look at even a you know Grain Nickel, something like that, their names are changing. changing all the yeah. time. Where well, this this one's uh, stood the test of time, I guess. It has. It's been amazing. Um, Favorite one out of the lot. So you've got, we've just seen you go through, what is it, 15 bats out there. What was your favourite one out of the whole lot? I know you liked the graphite ones mm. because it, it never broke. I did like the graphite ones actually, I, I, because it was, it was different. I liked the look of it, you know, it was a matte, although that one there, that's a shiny finish. That was the first one that actually came through. So that was the first one of those carbon backed bats that I ever used, which I used in a test match against Pakistan at the SCG. Um, and then it changed. Then it actually went to a matte finish after that, like a, a, a matte grey with the same sort of colouring on it. And that just looked, you know, tapping that down behind your foot just looked awesome. So that probably, that probably would be my favourite. But I think every one they came up, they came up with, um, yeah, was always looked good and was pleasing to the eye. So we've got these two, Rick. You just want to tell us the difference and, and what happened, obviously going through that. That's obviously really shiny and reflective, and that's. Um, 
less so. Yeah, and that, I mean, it's been toned down a little bit as well. So I think there was some, back in the day, I think you were only allowed to cover about 50% of the back with stickers or something like that. If you look at that now, there was nearly the whole back of it's covered. <laughs> so they've taken this silver bit out here, they've taken a lot of the silver out here, and that's replaced with that. And it's gone from that really shiny finish to the matte finish. I think, thinking back now, I think some of the fielders are complaining about the sun the sort of yeah, glaring off the back of it. So that was another little, <laughs> another little advantage I had. I could just wave it in front of the slips and they, <laughs> they couldn't see where the ball was coming. Um, so that, I reckon that one there was probably, my, that was definitely my favourite of the carbon ones. And then this was right towards the back. And that's probably, actually that's my last seat. That's my last test match bat, actually. Surprising there's got many marks on it for the last year that oh, I played. Goodness gracious me. No, that, so, all those marks must have been in shield cricket because the test I played that year I didn't get many in the middle. But that was that was the last. Yeah. Which I think that I think that's a really good sticker too. It's pretty cool. So there'll be two of the sort of favourite or favourite ones I had. So you obviously you're a genuine bat nuffy. How many would you carry on tour on average? And how long would your favourite one last? I was, when I got a good one and a favourite one, so that bat there, for instance, that I made a lot of run, that wouldn't have seen, that wouldn't have seen a net session. Yeah. So once I got into using it, that was put away for game only. So I'd probably have maybe three or four that were ready for game. And then I'd take a, if I was going to one or two, I'd probably have two, three brand new ones in there that I'd be starting to use in the nets, getting ready to take the place of those ones if they eventually broke. So, um, but not as many as, like Smithy's got his own bag now. <laughs> He's actually running. got his own backpack full of bats. And one full of gloves. Yeah, and I, I can't imagine no. like you get any sort of consistency with that. You, you, get, get, well, you he, get confused. He does, he's not about consistency though, is he? He's like, <laughs> one, one he day to one. He how to hold the bat different days. <laughs> yeah. um, um, so probably, yeah, probably, I don't reckon I would have gone on a tour or a summer with any more than six, but um, when I had a good one, mate, I, and if you've seen some of them out, them out there, I used them until there was not a run left in them. Like, they're all, they're taped up, they've got dowel in them, they've got, you know, the handles have all been re-glued. You'll see they're all fractured around there, they've all been glued up, there's tape around the top. Yeah, that face is completely gone. And, I mean, this is this one, I reckon, I could still use that now. That's that's still nice and solid. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with that. I could, I might get it cleaned up and let little Fletcher take it out. <laughs> he can have that when he's about 13. Yeah, you'll have to get him one of the new ones. I have to. Max's yeah, number on it. I'll sign it for him. Yeah. Well, he probably knows, he knows your number more than he knows my number anyway, that's for sure. Um, all right, Rick, there's been a lot made of bat sizes, and you have you probably saw the back end of your career where you saw a few bats get a little bit bigger. You showed us one out there, which was the big edge, yeah. which we really liked. Yeah. Um, thoughts on your bat compared to mine currently? Well, let's have a little look. So this one is probably the bat that I made the most look, well, most test runs with anyway. Um, if we have a look at the profile of those two bats, they're pretty, and look at the edge profile, the, the, the um, what would you call it? The, the, the peak of the swell at the back, I guess, is not that much different, but you can just, there's just so much more, I reckon, margin for error, don't you reckon? With miss hits, with, the, with how thick they are from there to there, it's almost like a, and you're a golf tragic like me, right? Yeah. You'd sort of sort, you'd say that that's playing with like a blade, a blade. and that's like a, a big oversized cavity back. Yeah. So that's how you'd sort of, and I know that was, it, so you think back through the years and where the, you know, the, the grain of scoop, or the scoop that was actually... They took wood out of it. Yeah, but it actually spread the it spread the sweet spot out across the blade, didn't it? Like yeah. a cavity back golf club. So that's what this does now, but without the without the scoop out of the back. So, I mean, that I had a lot bigger bats than that when I was playing. That just happened to be a, a smaller profile bat that was a just an incredibly good bat. Um, and that one there is even, that one there is even smaller again. I mean, if you look at that, this thing would just eat it. Looks like it's gonna just <laughs> eat it. It's gonna swallow it, but... Um, no, that's the evolution of the game, right? It's, you know, technology and things had to come into cricket. There was, and, you know, this is now an everyday occurrence, right? Every player's got a bat like that. But yeah. back in the day, every player had bats like this, and it wasn't until someone come along with the a way to be a bigger one that someone said, hang on, well, I want one yeah. yeah. And then players became more demanding and put it back on the manufacturers that you had to do this, you had to do that. And I know I certainly did that with, with Cooker because it, you just weren't able to compete, really. Yeah. I mean, you had to be significantly better than the guy using a slightly, in, a, like a, a bigger bat to be able to, to, be able to cope. And, and, and to have the confidence to, and this is the thing now I reckon with modern batters, with the bats that are used, you, you have no, if, even if you miss hit it now, you're getting it over mid off. Yeah. Like, and I was, never, I was never a power hitter, but I was, I was, if I didn't get it right in the middle, in a one day, I wouldn't get it over mid off. <laughs> it wasn't going over mid off. Until you know the back, the back end where they started to get better, and, and it, as a as a player, it just breeds so much confidence. You, you just got no worry in the world that you can clear the ring or clear the boundary. 
Yeah, it probably changed the way stroke play happened once the bats got bigger, guys got more confident. They didn't care if Longo went back. Absolutely. Like, I'm confident I can sit. If I get this anywhere near yeah. the base of the bat, it's probably going to go over. Exactly. Um, I remember we played uh, IPL together in 2013. I think that's right about when the bats started to get bigger. I think we were looking through all the Indians' bats and mm. they were obviously, it felt like they were far better than ours. The, the type of wood they were getting, yeah. the size, they were so dried out, yeah. and like they were big profiles, and then still really light. They were still about two pound nine, two pound yeah. ten. And I mean, it was just—it wasn't. I mean, through a year, as I said before, like I might have had twenty bats a year, and I might have got, you know, a couple that were, yeah, that, even that one there, a couple yeah. that sort of the size of that, which is not an overly big bat, but you know, I might have got a couple out of the twenty that were like, no, it's not that one, it's that one there, um, yeah, that was sort of that sort of profile. But now you'd get. 18 out of 20, that would be your weight, that would yep. be that sort of... So that's, I mean, that's complete credit to, to Kookaburra and the bat makers to be able to do, to be able to give the players what they want because it, because it is, it's just, you know, it's just so important. One thing I noticed about looking at your bats out there, they were such a similar profile pretty much the whole way through, regardless of what the stickers were, they mm. were such a similar profile the whole way through. Did you ever tinker with different weights, tinker with different uh, toes, uh, grips, whatever it was? Well, one thing you see with a lot of mine as well is they, a lot of them will have tape under the handles. I reckon that one will. That one doesn't. Uh, that one certainly would. Um, and that, I, I had to... I'm worried about this. Just yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was all about... Like, my, the handles were vitally important to me. I had to, have, I had to have the right feel on the handle. So if the handle was a little bit out of shape or it wasn't quite right, I, I'd put stretchy finger tape around it to make sure I got the actual... the the feel of the handle right. Um, my gloves stayed the same right through my career, always really small, really tight. Um, because it was that was the feel on the bat was just so important to me. And even how they, as you say about the toe of the bat. So I used to be really, if I stood there and tapped the bat down behind my foot, if it felt like the bat, you know sometimes I feel like they want to fall open? Yeah. Gone, that was just thrown away straight away. I could not use it, I had to have it that it would sit square up around the outside of my foot. So I actually felt like I had the, the the um, face of the bat square all the time. I didn't like having the bat face. And when it, when it tapped open, it always felt like it was going to pick up, up, up open. So that was one thing I was pretty pedantic about. Which, if I, which looking back now, was another thing I could have controlled with, if I had had that square toe the, the whole time, which a lot of the players have now, then yeah. there's no way, they can't fall open, can they? But I noticed a lot of your bats are quite rounded at the bottom. So you, you kept with that shape. And then uh, look at this big edge one here. It's a little bit straighter. A bit squarer, yeah. And that's just how they come. That was just how they made them. Um, so as you say, I was pedantic about it, but once they came with a round toe, toe I couldn't add some on and square it up. Could yeah. I, or I had to take some off and make it smaller to square it up. Yeah. But, yeah. If, if, and if they were rounded on the toe and they were, you know, if they, they still had to sit right, and then if they, if they rebounded well, then they were just in the bag and I'd keep them until they wouldn't, wouldn't go anymore. Well, there's certainly not much left in a couple of these. No, they're not. They've been played to death, that's for sure. It's amazing. It's amazing that you were able to, I suppose, hold on to these. Because I know one, once I get a good cricket bat, I just want to keep using it. And like, sometimes I'll get throw downs with it and get a bit nervous. Even just hit one off the toe. And if it breaks, there goes your favourite and you're almost left disappointed before we game. Well, especially now. I mean, I remember when we first started playing T20 cricket and we didn't think that the game was going to be around for that long. I, I always said to myself, I'm not using my good bats in these games because I know I'm more of a chance of breaking them because yep. you're swinging even at training, right? You, you, you're probably breaking more, you'd be breaking 20 times the amount of bats now than you would have before T20 100%. really took off. Yep. And most of those are probably at practice. Yep. Yeah. So Because well, I think you're trying to expand how good you can be in the nets, you're trying exactly. to work out different ways of hitting your six, yep. trying to um, just see what you can possibly do in the nets. Yep. and then. So I wouldn't have been doing that with one of my good bats, no way, I wouldn't have been risking it. <laughs> Which is why I think modern day players have to take so many more bats on tour. Yeah, 100%. Especially like white ball tours. You, you could be away for three, four months at a time. You break two bats to training, you're scraping the bottle. Of yeah, but you might, you might break two in one session. Yep. That's not... It's not uncommon. No. So, yeah, you, I totally understandable. Guys, thank you so much for joining myself and Rick. Rick. It's been awesome going through the history of your bats. Um, so glad you get to see the Kahuna icon this year and hopefully I can wield it half as good as you did for 30 years of your career. Thanks mate, it's my first time in the bat cave. I don't think I want to leave. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Two nothings, <laughs> talking about cricket. Thanks very much guys.